That's right, up a bit higher, and then let it go very cleanly. Perfect, that's it. Hi, well in this film we're going to be joined by Dr Damien Goodburn, who's the resident timber expert from the Museum of London, and he specialises in ancient woodworking. Anyway, very lucky he's going to give us a demonstration on hewing timber. Up and use plenty of force. You want to go towards you a bit? No, not that much, just a little. That's it, up a bit higher. Okay. Okay, that should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not natural anymore, it's starting to be humanly affected. Okay, now the next thing to do, an easy way of uh, holding the timber in place and traditional, is to use dogs, which are iron staples. Uh, basically. I think the Romans were the first to use them and we find the bites they leave in the timber occasionally from the Roman period. Ideally you don't use an axe for this, you use a second hammer but I didn't bring one with me. But the main thing is that for the first stage of the hewing, the last thing you want to use is a side axe. But side axe is a relatively recent invention. Now the quickest way to do this, you all need to move back now. You can st if you stand on the log it'll be a lot quicker. But Try not to stick the corner of the axe blade in too far. Fly that way, and they're going to fly that way. So you're better off standing square on, or at the end, okay? And the, what happens with a lot of people who start out viewing is the corner of the, the axe is allowed to dig in too far, and it leaves a mark on the finished timber. So I'm trying to avoid that. I could probably have put these grooms further apart with with chestnut because it splits so easily. Uh, if you've got knots, you want to cut the groove straight through the knots. I'm on the edge of a knot there, so I'll try to cut the groove through there. So I'll show you the next stage. Yep. Now you all know about cleaving timber, so the issue here is which way is the grain going? If this stuff is knotty, you have to work um, downhill in the relation to the grain. If, if, the, if there's a knot here and the grain's coming out this way, and if you swing in that way, you're going to start a split which runs into the timber. Okay, with this log, it's going to make virtually no difference because it's almost perfectly straight grain. But with some of that stuff, you'd have to be very careful. Okay, some people will start at the, the upper end of the log, which is there, as the tree grows. People will start the other way. Sometimes you start in the middle, depending on where the knots are. And starting is more difficult than anything else. I'll probably start. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this bit. The grain is going in slightly this way now, but it's only slight. You can hew more directly across, or you, this is really almost just splitting off the, the uh, scored timber. You may want to kneel on it, then you won't have to lean so far. You can go down more if you're worried about it, but you have to be more accurate. So you can see it's the cutting the scores, which is the laborious bit. This stage of hewing goes relatively quickly. Roughly every four foot the hewer would use a plumb bob. And you put it down on the face, and there we've taken away, or I've taken away, a bit too much. And it's quite easy to do that, even though I've been hewing for a while. Uh, here we're not back to the line, we can't really do it, but we're on the line there. That'll be fine. I've probably taken off just a tiny bit too much there. And the idea is, this should really have probably a bit more of a crank in it. So what we're doing now is starting at the top, creating a straight line. And you notice we're hewing across the grain, not down it, as you generally do with your, your bodging tools. But these tools were used up until about 1240, so they were used in the early stages of timber frame carpentry. And they were used by shipwrights and coopers as well. In Old English, woodworkers were just called tree rights, and they weren't divided into guilds the way they were in later medieval times. So a lot of people used this type of axe. By about 1240, 1250, they seem to have gone out of fashion, and they move over to a heavier tool. And are these tools made now? Uh, yeah, they're made to order now, but they're quite expensive. The Swedes have started making them, although they didn't use that tool in Sweden. So this is a, is a Bordeaux Cooper's axe, we call it a Dolwar. Um But uh, obviously carpenters use them as well. And that is, that's close enough. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that, and thanks to Damien for a great demo.